that's where it becomes uh, problematic. Jetty Osmond started for the Cleveland Cavaliers last night. He played just 14 minutes. Clarkson had about 24 minutes. Rodney Hood had about the same. Larry Nance Jr. put in about 23 minutes, etc. And we're talking about a Cleveland Cavaliers team that doesn't have its second best player in Kevin Love, who's a walking double-double, and by the way, a better three-point shooter than any of the names that we threw out there, including LeBron James. <laughs> this is Kevin Love that we're talking about here. So you're going to have to find a way to reinsert him into the equation. It's going to be really interesting to see what Tyron Liu does with that. But there is no question, because of the youth, the fact that your defense and your athleticism and your fresh legs have been elevated to a positive standpoint, there's no question that the Cleveland Cavaliers, I, I think, will, will walk through the Eastern Conference. It's what will they do in the finals. And you're not going to know that until you see how much they can elevate their defensive play, their, their level of defensive play. We constantly talk about the Golden State Warriors. Klay Thompson, I think Steph Curry's the best shooter I've ever seen. Klay Thompson is right up there. We all know that Kevin Durant is a superstar, et cetera, et cetera. But what we don't give them enough credit for is how – formidable Golden State's defense is. They don't win games because they shoot jump shots all the time. They win games because they know how to lock you down when it's time. If Cleveland somehow, some way, elevates themselves to a point defensively where all of a sudden they're locking you down, where 6'8 Rodney Hood is suddenly formidable because he's on the court with a LeBron James and your best perimeter defensive play in J.R. Smith elevates his defensive level of play. And whether it's a Tristan Thompson or Larry Nance Jr. doing what they can do defensively, it can get interesting because now you're talking about a Cavaliers team that has the ability to do what they couldn't do until the trading deadline last week, and that was play defense. That's what I'm looking at right now. That's what gives them a puncher's chance, and that's what makes them roar through the Eastern Conference with no problem. So I'm excited so about the potential. are you more or less excited finals. about the playoffs? I specifically answered the question. More. I said I'm more excited more? about the finals, but I'm not excited at all about the Eastern Conference. I'm excited about the, the potential is, of the finals. The answer is correct. You should be more excited about the finals, but it's not because the Cavaliers have any chance against the Warriors, because they don't. The reason is because the Rockets have a chance against the Warriors and maybe the Cavs have a chance against the Rockets. And because the way the Cavs were looking, even when you get to the Eastern Conference, just focus on that. The way the Cavs were looking before the deadline. Yeah, did you really even think they were going to get to the Eastern Conference Finals? It didn't look like that to me, not right before bad. the deadline. You thought they had the potential on the team, but whoa, they were not showing it. So the playoffs in every way have gotten more interesting. Number one. The Cavs, I expect them, and you do, to get through the Eastern Conference, Stephen A. I don't know if they walk through. I don't know if they breeze through, but I do expect them to get through. Mainly because Toronto is obviously, you know, clearly now they're better than the... I mean, they've surpassed the Celtics, it seems, at least the way they've been playing recently, as the number one threat to the Cavs. But in crunch time, where, where Toronto shares the ball all throughout the game, in crunch time, they have two guys they go to, in DeRozan and Lowry, and both of them fail repeatedly in the, cr in the clutch because the other team knows, oh, they're going to go to ISO with one of these two guys, and they focus on them and they stop them. So they need to figure that out. That happens a lot in the NBA, incidentally, when you have talents like DeRozan. If they're not good enough to get it done one on five, you ain't going to win. And if they're not smart enough to know, I got to go to, to other guys right now because everyone's focusing on me, you ain't going to win. And I think that's what Toronto is facing now. So I agree the Cavs get by him. But Toronto's been so good, holding opponents to so few points while scoring so many, it may not come down to crunch time. You know, so, so the Eastern Conference, because the Cavs got better, because we're not sure that this is not just a honeymoon phase, that this is actually sustainable, the Eastern Conference playoffs are much more interesting than they were before the trade where you thought, oh, the Cavs ain't going to get to the Conference Finals. The Western Conference is more interesting because the Rockets got better, and the Finals are more interesting because there's a chance it could be the Rockets instead of Golden State, and then no matter who it is from the East, the Cavaliers especially, but even maybe the Raptors or maybe the Celtics, the finals then become more, oh, I don't know who's going to win. Stephen In every a, way, the playoffs just got East? more interesting. It's just, it's just a matter of preference. First of all, yeah. I'm, down, I'm down on the East because Kyrie doesn't have Gordon Haywood. Mm -hmm. And what I see is a Celtics team that lacks the appropriate depth. Okay. When I look at Toronto, as much as I love DeMar DeRozan, 
I think that he's tailor made for LeBron for LeBron James. If he were playing a different position, it would be entirely different. But because he's that guy, he's a six 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 seven guard type player who can average twenty seven a game. You put the LeBrons of the world uh, uh, on on him, you neutralize his impact. And I don't think anybody else in the East is ready. Washington lacks depth. I don't know what the hell is going on with them emotionally as well. We'll see what happens when John Wall comes back. And in the case of the Miami Heat, I love the fact that D Wade is there. Miami was my sleeper even before he got there. He doesn't have to do much until postseason time but I look at the rest of the Miami Heat and they have problems making perimeter shots when it counts in my estimation it's still a problem that's what my thing is what I'm excited about however is that I look at LeBron uh, Max and here's what my thinking is you talk about all of those other components of course that comes with it undeniably so but the reason why this is why I talk about it's not a negative about LeBron it's a testament to his greatness but we're always asking for more from the truly, truly great ones. And we're going to ask for more from LeBron here because here's why. When you have these young pieces who are athletic and can defend, let's surmise for a second or assume for a second, they're going to at least do their job. What I'm saying to you is that at some point in time, it, it should come down to LeBron's ability to close, to put on that cape, and just take and just ride the wave. I have no doubt against that Golden he'll do State? it. Hold on, hold on. I have no doubt that he'll do it against the East. My point right. is, can 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 this team, for example, let's not be literal in terms of the number of games. Let's compartmentalize for a second, Max, and go game by game. Is it possible that most of the games come down to the wire? Even if Golden Which State games? can find a way. I'm saying in the finals. Let's say, for example, Golden no. State, they could, they, they could win the series in five games. But what I, I saw last year during the finals, there were a couple of close games. What I'm saying is I like the right. idea. I fantasize, me personally, I fantasize of it's close. And you're in a position as a team where you're able to take the basketball and say, here you go, Superman, what you going to do? I love that. That's not the that's way what I wish I for. And it can but happen. That's what I, I'm not saying it will, but it but can that, happen. I don't think it can. And I think that you and I and others who watched basketball in the Michael Jordan era and then Kobe Bryant, we are used to now, you know, out of the Magic Bird era where a lot of their genius was, was spreading the ball around. We got into this mentality where it's, no, Michael Jordan at the end of the game, the reason his team always wins is because you can't stop him. Kobe Bryant, the same kind of thing, like Michael Jordan light. Same sort of thing. And people got used to that mentality. That's not the way the league works anymore. And I don't think not one man, time, but even LeBron James, can do that against Golden State. I will say this. In the Eastern Con let's take last year, for example. Everyone knew Cavs are coming out of the East. No one else has a shot. Everyone knew Golden State's coming out of the West. No one else has a shot. And everyone knew Golden State was going to smoke the Cavs, right? We, everyone knew it. We tried to get cute here and there. Not me, but others tried to get cute here and there. But we all knew what was going to happen, and that's what happened. This year, there are three teams who could come out of the East. I believe it'll be the Cavs. But you can't just discount Boston or Toronto. And out of the West, there are two teams that could come out of the West because you cannot count out Houston. That is a big change from last year, and I'm here to tell you that if it's the Cavs that get out of the East and the Rockets that get out of the West, now the Cavs have a chance to win a championship. If it's Golden State, it's over. But against Houston, maybe the Cavs have a shot. And I'm saying to you that I like this is the sport of basketball, and I literally believe that one guy can do it. I'm not talking about by himself, but I'm saying that if you have a team collectively that's gifted enough to maintain competitiveness. Mm -hmm. It can come down to what a superstar can bring in those moments. I watched Kevin Durant literally in the finals, I think it was game three or game four, when he hit that three in LeBron's face. There was a time during that game, standing in that arena, near courtside, where I'm looking at these guys and I'm thinking, Cleveland has this game. And before you had an opportunity to pass gas, here comes Kevin Durant. And just like that, it changed Kevin in a matter Durant. of a couple oh. of minutes. I'm saying those moments in the sport of basketball, okay. in the sport of basketball, it happens.
It does happen. I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you. But what I believe you're really overlooking here is why could LeBron do it against those guys when they won 73 games? Because he had a crime partner who was also a legitimately great player in Kyrie Irving. He does not have another legitimately great player on his team. I like Kevin Love a lot. I'm t- he's not quite on that level where we talk about the, the true, the all time greats. He does not That's have not a guy like saying. that or a talent like that. But I am because what you noticed in Kevin Durant was enabled by the presence of Steph Curry, an MVP, by Clay Thompson, an all star, and by Draymond Green, an all star. He had those yeah, guys on being the team. Too so his contribution is to put him over the top. LeBron didn't have that. You're, you're being too literal. I'm not, ign- I'm not denying that you need that extra person. What I'm saying is, is that in the sport of basketball, there can come a moment inside the last two or three minutes where you can literally look at one guy and say, here's mm-hmm. the ball, take me there. You can find yourself in that kind of situation. In football and other sports, you can't do that. It's a collective right. effort. But there are moments in basketball where it can literally come down to a Superman caliber player putting on his cape and driving yeah. you to that games, moment Stephen, in the last couple of minutes. That's, that's all I'm trying to yeah, say. One or two games. I appreciate well, wait, let me ask, what both of you are saying well, well, Molly, yeah. let me ask you this question, Molly and Max. What if, it, what if it's 2-2? Two, two? What if it's 2-2? Two, hey, that's two and, better than a sweep. T- that's what we thought before these I, I'm, moves I'm happened. Not, I'm not. You didn't let me finish. What Sorry. if it's 2-2 two, two and it's game five? And then five, LeBron does that. And it's game mm-hmm. five. Yeah. And because you know, sometimes game five is that decided game. What if it's 2-2 two, two and then it's a game five? I'm just saying you don't know. And that's what I'm wishing for. And that's what I think has a decent chance of happening. Listen, I agree right. with both of you. Max saying there's more squads in the mix in this playoff run, which is exciting. And also the finals are now more competitive. Gentlemen, we will leave it there, though. Still to come, Trey Young has taken the college game by storm this season. But is he ready for the